lovelies. Come on in. Who's ready to get their Thirsty Thursday on? It's time. Bring it on in. Looking for some lovelies. I see Norma coming in. There's Trisha. Who else do I see? Catherine and Trisha are watching. Facebook is now telling me these things, you guys. <laughs> Hello. I'm not going to play with the goofy magic mirror, but you know I have it. There's Sue, Christy, and Joanne. Amber's in the house. So's Janet. Yay. Happy Thursday to you, Joanne. There's Denise and Anna. They're watching. Who else do we have? I've got JM Aware, Doris Deck, Tom and Sandy Charles, Denise is in the house, Heidi's here. Look at you all coming on in. There's my girl Autumn. Hello, Autumn. Rachel, Jennifer, and four others. Lizzie's here. That's a good sign. Marguerite, Juanita, Doris, hello. Thank you, Autumn, for sharing. Sandy's in the house, hello. I love Carol Ann. Look at all of you lovelies coming on in. I see you, Heidi. I see you, Gwen. Don't you like being seen? I do. Hi, Joyce. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Deborah Grogan is here. Hello, hello. So here it is. I love Thursdays. Thursdays are funny days. There's my girl, Vanessa. I'm glad you're here. Jennifer's here too. I am glad everyone is here. We had a big show today, seriously. And the reason it's a big show is this was an aha moment that I had for myself. You know, Norma got her seat for full bloom. Yay! Who else has their seat for full bloom? We'll talk about that today. We got a lot of stuff going on and I'm telling you I'm ready to bust out Kayla. I haven't seen you in a long time. It's so good to see you. So here's the deal. Today, as I was getting all of my things done, do you know what I did? Do you know what I did? I started thinking, I, and I wrote myself some notes. Should I be doing this or should I be doing that? Should I be doing this or should I be doing that? I need to put myself a note, reevaluate this, that, and the other thing. And I thought about that, and I'm gonna tell you all about it coming up <laughs> because you're gonna die laughing it's so funny it is so funny all right let's get the quote of the week it's do fight for the things that you care about but do it in a way that will lead others to join you you know who said that we're honoring her memory and um, she was a great woman Ruth Bader Ginsburg and that's our quote of the week also I good Marguerite got her seat. Marlena, hello, good to see you. We have our supplement of the week, you guys, and it is flying. I love this, you wanna know why? Because this is a, a supplement that I am telling you is a game changer. Any of you who have type two diabetes, been told you're insulin resistant, you know what they're not telling you about? Being leptin resistant, and this will help you. This is called Leptifix. Leptifix helps to fix your leptin, so you're not gonna be starving all the time, and it will also get, it, get you to the place where it will eventually help you to correct these issues if you're eating right. So I'm, I'm just, I'm head over heels in love with this. You take it on an empty stomach every single morning. I do this with my SAME, would not be without it. And then there's also Crave Crusher, which comes along on the back side of it. Both of those are just super effective for helping to fix broken hormones and also to help with cravings. If you spend $200 in our shop, look what you get. Pinky's up cup. Do you love this or what? Look at that, the heart, the hands, Pinky's up. And it says in solidarity because people always ask, what are you guys up to with this Pinky's up business? It's our salute to one another. It's like saying, peace be with you. It's like saying, hey, come on in. You're a part of this. And well, we now have a cup to go with it. We have several cups and we always change the design. When they run out, we get new cups in. And this is, we've got people who are collecting them. So if you're a collector, the new one's on and ready to go. 
Saturday is full bloom. It's already here. Can you believe it? This originally was supposed to be done here at my house on my deck <laughs> with appetizers, with an amazing group of people, with an amazing hearts open, all of it. Well, if I'm not gonna get on an airplane, I'm not expecting you to do it. I also didn't wanna keep it down to 10. I also didn't wanna be wearing, you know, masks. And I didn't, <laughs> I also didn't wanna be not hugging you. So we've decided to do it virtually instead. And I grabbed Marla by the, by the arm and said, come on in there with me. Because you know, we have been on a journey together for 20 years, and I will tell you this right now. It was when our mindsets changed that our lives changed, that we both had careers we hadn't planned on, that we, which were, have been incredible, which gave us opening and space and gave us everything. It started up here. If you don't start here, you can't get to there. Doesn't that make sense? This is why today's talk is so important because it's about the process. I want you to be there. It's $47, but you're gonna get, let me show you some cool things. You're gonna get this full bloom mug put in the mail for you. Come on, isn't this so cute? How pretty is that? Full bloom, living in full bloom, living to your ultimate, living to the maximum, living vibrantly, full bloom, like a rose. Rose is pretty when it's a little bud, but when it's in full bloom, it's in all its glory. That is what we're doing on Saturday. I'm also sending you this cute little magnet. I'm also sending you this cute little notepad. They're, they went out yesterday, they're going out today. It's not too late to sign up. Go to savingdinner.com forward slash bloom. Easy. Marla and I will be there with bells on. It's gonna be a great time. I want you there. It's $47, okay? You know how you can get this 47 bucks back? Plan your menus for a week, easy, right? Stop spending money on stupid stuff and don't forget you get this amazing swag bag and these little gifties in the mail. Swag bag alone is worth 200 bucks. Lots of lots and lots of good stuff. You can find out all the details. Savingdinner.com forward slash bloom. Don't forget about it. And tomorrow's Q&A, by the way. Are you, are you going to be listening? Do you have a question for me? Nutrition, supplements, cooking. Saving dinner, to, uh, just uh, sorry, send the uh, questions into support at savingdinner.com. Question for Leanne on Friday goes in the subject line. It will be added to my docket and we'll do it. Jennifer said she's very excited. Yay! I know Norma's going to be there. There's a lot of people going to be there. Joanne's going to be there. Mm. We are going to have a great time. And the fun thing about this is we do it on this platform called Crowdcast so I can bring people on to ask questions. Is that fun or what? If you're part of, um, if you're a part of our Hot Milk Club or Take Back Your Life, we have we have something fun too. Pajama party on Friday night, seven o'clock Eastern. Bring wine. <laughs> what do you think? Okay, so that's what we have going on, and don't forget too, our holiday stuff is coming up. That's coming up on October. Uh, 10th, that's also a Saturday. And Marla and I, big believers in getting stuff done in advance so that you're not having a meltdown on the night before. I don't know about you, but I can tell you, I, I can't count how many times <laughs> I've had a meltdown on Christmas Eve because I wasn't ready. You know, that's no good. Or sending out Christmas cards way in advance. It's just dumb. So these, we have tactics for that. We have ideas, we have homemade gift ideas, cookie exchanges food that you can make and put in a jar and all kinds of stuff. The swag bag's ridiculous. Check it out, savingdinner.com forward slash um, cruise. Cruise, like I'm going on a cruise, folks. And uh, it's gonna be really fun. I, I can't wait for that one. Today we're talking about being stuck. Anybody ever been stuck? <laughs> you know? Have you ever been in that place of just saying, oh, it's just the worst. I feel like I'm not going anywhere. I feel like I can't move the needle at all. I hear this all the time, especially with my coaching clients. I hear this, no, I'm stuck, I'm on a plateau, nothing's happening. And I wanna talk about the whole idea of being stuck because stuck isn't a place. 
Stuck is a mindset, is what it is. You can write that down. Stuck is not a place, it's a mindset. And when we get in that mindset, it's a circle. We also call it the carousel of crazy. Because a carousel of crazy, I mean, what's a carousel do? Where does it go? Nowhere. What does it do? It goes up and down. And if that's your weight, you know the carousel of crazy well, because you've done it. You've invested money in a program, you've gotten some diet book, some guru that you've followed, some plan. You've done all the work, you lost the weight, then you put it back on. And then you go and you find another guru, another book, another program, another supplement, another something, and you get right back onto the carousel of crazy and do the same thing again. And you know what that is? You know why it's a carousel of crazy? Because it's nutty to think for a minute that we can ever possibly, for a minute, get off of that thing if we constantly are putting ourselves on it. And you know what else is nutty about it? It's the same thing. There's a pattern there. And that pattern develops over time because we had that momentary success and we think if we can just dial it in, we can stay off the carousel of crazy forever And it's just, we need the right program, the right guru, the right book, the right process. And that's where we get stuck. That process. That process, when you're stuck in the process, you don't get results. When you're stuck in the process, you don't get any progress. Because the process is really, fundamentally, about being perfect. About the perfect program the perfect plan, the perfect guru, the perfect fill in the blank. We forget that we're individuals. We forget that we need to do something to customize it and to make it our own. And we also forget that we aren't allowing for the unfolding. Now, this is an important concept here, allowing for the unfolding because we want everything on speed dial everything. We have this microwave mentality when sometimes we just got to go to the crock pot, (laughs) you know? We got to toughen that that roast up. Yeah, there you go, cooking analogy. Got to throw it in. But you know what? This is the things, these are the things that I know, and I know this to be true, and I know this from everybody that, you know, I have the privilege of counseling. And that is that when we allow for the unfolding, we allow for things to open up naturally. You know what happens if you take a pair of scissors and you cut open an egg of a chick that's trying to get out? That chick will die. Same with the butterfly. You don't do it for them. The struggle needs to help, (laughs) is there to help the chick breathe. It's there to help the, the butterfly's wings unfold. The struggle is what helps. The struggle is the teacher. The struggle is the strengthener. You get that? This one's a, that's an important thing. When we have our struggles, when we have these things, unless we're focused on the struggle, then we're going to fail if we focus completely on that. But if we focus instead, not on the struggle, but instead on the process and on the progress of getting past, well, got past this one thing, got past this other thing, I'm I'm sticking with it no matter what, even though I don't get instantaneous results, I'm I'm gonna stay the course. When we do that, we're allowing for the unfolding. Now, a plateau can be completely different, and you know, tell me what a plateau is anyway, you know? Is a plateau being in, you know, no weight loss for a month, a week, 10 days, what is it? You get to define that, but We have ways out of that, always. There's always ways out of that. That's a sidebar entirely. But I'm talking about being stuck in the process. We have to allow for the unfolding. We also have to document what the heck is going on. If we see this, that constant carousel of crazy, if we see this, we need to document it. What's going on here? What am I really eating? Write it down. How much of that am I eating? Write it down. How do I feel? Do I have symptoms? Am I bloated? Does it make my joints hurt? Is my digestion off? Write it down. 
When we document and write down what's going on, we can see and pinpoint what it is because we have like a momentary, ooh, my stomach hurts, and then we're off to the next thing. We don't need to do that. You know what we need to do? We need to step up to saying, I am willing to go into this place of writing all this down so that I can have a bird's eye view of what the heck is going on. Until we get to that place, we can't see it because it's forest through the trees. Have you seen that before? I've seen that before with myself. We also need to have an awareness of our inner dialogue. Hmm? How about this? I'll never lose weight. I'll never get this off. It's too hard. I'm on the struggle bus. I can't do this. I have, I, I'm feeling deprived. <laughs> and on and on it goes. That inner dialogue is going to hold you back. And you don't have to be held hostage by your own inner dialogue. You're the one with the voice. It's your voice. Or maybe you've got somebody else's voice saying you can't do it or whatever. Whatever. I'm going to tell you this right now, though. This is what I know. That when those voices, when you're hearing these things, at any point you can say, it's enough. I'm done with that. This is why I give you a quote of the week. Write it down. Put it all over the place and make yourself focus on those things. When I give you something else to say, when I say, hey, this is, this is wisdom, you can take this to the bank, write it down. Read books, listen to podcasts, you know, put your direction and what you're thinking about into a different place. What you focus on expands and what you focus on becomes your destiny as well. We can write this stuff out at any point. We can decide which way we're gonna go at any point, but understand, that the Oregon trails in our heads, those well-traveled paths, that's where our brain always wants to go back because that's known, it's safe, it's less risky. So fighting to create a new path, fighting to create a new outcome for yourself means that you're willing to go there. You're aware of it, you're writing it down, you're flipping the script on the thoughts that are in your head and you're seeing it for what it is. This is just a form of perfect perfectionism, right? perfectionism and procrastination, you know? You might be wearing the procrastination robe, but you've got the shoes of procrastination, meaning you're not going anywhere. You're not doing one thing. You're stuck in the process. You can do this, and I'll, I'll, I'll let me just give my whole life a, an example. I have a coaching thing that I belong to, and I saw another coaching thing come up today of somebody that I admire. And I saw that and I thought, well, maybe I should be reevaluating this and do this instead. Maybe they've got things better for me. Maybe I'm with the wrong person. Maybe I need to be doing carousel of crazy, y'all. Carousel of crazy. Why would I want to do that? Why would I want to do that? Why don't I instead put myself full into what it is that I need to do? Fully in, committed 100%. You know, it's like being married to someone and keeping your options open by having Tinder on your phone. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> you know? Who do you commit to? What do you commit to? We need to just stay the course oftentimes and look for not the whole thing, not dumping the whole thing. It's not throwing the baby out with the bathwater, but instead looking and see, is there something that needs to be dialed in? Am I hydrating correctly? Do I have enough fiber in my diet? Am I taking my supplements every day? Self-care, stress reduction, sleep. Are they all dialed in? Or do I just throw it all out and start over? You know, hey, maybe that nutrient systems plan wasn't so bad after all. Maybe that crappy food didn't taste that crappy. Maybe I need to do that. I lost weight on that. Not to say that, you know, that's what your focus is right now. But if you look at the full picture, y'all gained it all back too. And then some. Didn't work. Didn't work. We can't do something temporarily. We have to commit to something permanent. We need to commit to some a path. We need to commit to a vision, not just a short-term plan. Because progress isn't perfection, it's process. It's part of the process. The process is part of the progress, but the progress has to have its own vehicle. You can't just have it be about process because if it is only about process, 
You're not going to get up off the couch. You're not going to put down the phone. You're not going to stop watching Netflix. You're just going to keep looking for the next perfect thing. So how do we get out of this cycle? It's a loop. It's, it is the carousel of crazy. How do we get out of it? This is what we need to do. I've got four things for you. You got to limit your research at some point. And also you need to go to the best places for it. Go to PubMed. Get some science behind the things. Don't just read some article online. Don't just watch some YouTube video. Go over it and back to what is science-based, especially if it's like weight loss or you're looking at this and you're saying, well, I saw this documentary and I think that, you know, need to do this and that. Understand something with a documentary. Documentaries in the, at the end of the day, and I know plenty of people who've made documentaries personally, and they will tell you this too. They start with a premise and then they go to prove it. You know, it's not like they're unbiased. They're very biased. Forks over knives, vegans did this one. You want to look at, watch another one, you know, um, Big Fat Chance or something like that. That was made by also a guy with, you know, juicing and, and whatever. They all have an agenda. Understand that. Documentaries aren't made just like, oh, you know, here's just an idea, willy nilly, whatever. No, they're going to, they've got an ax to grind and they're going to prove it in, in their film. They are less reliable than actual science. Go to PubMed, find the science. You know, f you know. last night I did a, a thing with about CBD and th that's what the, the expert kept saying. You go to PubMed, put CBD plus whatever your ailment is and you will see the research that all lines up with it. And they also have on there, by the way, when you're in research mode, when you line all that up, They'll also tell you what biases they have, who's funding the, the study, et cetera. It's important to know. Also, look at those people. Go one step further. Look at the people and say, okay, this is what these guys are about. You know, ax to grind. Because, you know, anybody with enough money can start a study. Anybody with a point to, to proof can do a documentary. Well, I mean, it's going to cost you some money. It's going to cost you some expertise. But we've got to rely on actual science. Always look through that way. So limit your research, but go to the best sources to get it. Number two, you got to make a plan and you got to stick with it. It's got to be realistic in the fact that it's like you're not eating a bunch of crap that you don't want to eat. That's not going to work. It also has to be something that is real and true, as in real food, not a bunch of chemicals manufactured to make it taste like your favorite fast food fill in the blank. No, you gotta get real with it. You gotta, because if we don't get real, we're not gonna feed our bodies what they need. And we're gonna be constantly in this cycle of your body screaming for nutrition and instead just getting a bunch of mouth entertainment. We don't need to be entertained anymore in our mouths. We need to actually give our bodies the nutrients they need. Let's get down to brass tacks. So make a plan, stick with it, and make, as you're documenting all of this and seeing all of it, then you look at it and you say, something's not working here. I've got all of these things dialed in, and that's when you go to step three. You're accountable. Are you really? Are you eating enough um, protein or are you eating way too much? Because you know what happens? If you're eating enough protein, you're helping your body to repair and build. That's fantastic. You're eating too much protein, guess what? Insulin goes crazy. Who knew, right? Protein is important, but too much protein will just turn into glucose. And then we're back into square one when you're eating all those carbs. It's naughty, but it's important. So being accountable, getting a body clutter buddy, and saying, hey, I'm gonna show you my food for the week. I wanna stay accountable, something's not right here. I'm gonna tell you all the things that I'm doing. Let's make a time to meet and be accountable. Let me just tell you, the people who do that are the people who succeed. They're the people who find out and manage to see what the problem is and get that thing dialed in. That is where all the magic is. Number four, here you go, you guys. Put on your seatbelts. Stop lying about the littles. A little bit won't hurt. 
Ever said that? Just a little bit? Oh, I'll just do a little bit and then tomorrow I'll get back on the plan. I'll do a little of this. I'll take a little of that. I'll do it a little bit later. You do that. I do that all the time with exercise. I'll do it a little later. I got this to do. Really? What's the truth? The truth is you put it off and you're lying to yourself with the littles. And when we get real with it and we get accountable with it and we're writing it down, then things start to turn around. These little excuses, these little rationalizations, these I'm a little overwhelmed, I'm a little bit struggling, I'm a little whatever, so therefore, I'm gonna go have the chips in the cupboard or eat the M&Ms from the grocery store on the way home. Whatever it is, a little is gonna take you down a really bad path. For most of us, and from what I've found with 95% of the clients that I have counseled over the years, since 1993, by the way, 92, 93, somewhere along there, since that time, what I have found is that a little sugar is gonna be taking a little crack or a little heroin. I'm telling you, it will trash your, your mindset. It will trash and open up things that you don't want opened up. It will take you to the place back again to that place of addiction because there's so many of us who are addicted. Amber's so right. Did you see what she said? Small leaks sink ships. It's true. You know, you have a tiny leak on a great, on a great big, I don't care how big the vessel is, eventually it will fill with water and sink. When we little ourselves and give us a little latitude here and a little latitude there, or we're listening to somebody who says, well, everything in moderation. To me, that's evil incarnate, you know? Everything in moderation, really? No. For some of us that just plain Jane doesn't work, don't. You know yourself, you know what you can do. And if you can do an ounce of dark chocolate a day, go get the lilies by the way, an ounce of dark, if you can do an ounce of dark chocolate a day and it's not an issue, fine. But, if, but I'm gonna tell you right now, if that is opening Pandora's box and throwing you down the hill, Stay the heck away. A little bit is a lot of it for you. A little bit means we're opening up the whole thing and starting all over. Do you really want that? Most of us need to draw that line in the sand. Most of us. 5% of us don't, in my opinion, don't. And the others, we need to, we need to make a little, a big time delineation. So if you get stuck in the process, look at what it is. If, if you get stuck in the process and you're having zero progress, they're connected. <laughs> it's just that simple. They're connected. But I'm gonna tell you this, if you do this evaluation, if you limit your research, you make a plan and stick to it, you're accountable with somebody who's gonna call you out on it, is gonna see what you're eating, gonna see all the things, and you stop lying to yourself about the little bit the little bit of this and the little bit of that and a little bit of later, it's not gonna happen for you. And I'm, you know, it's an ugly truth, but it's the true truth. And we need to hear that. And we need to call ourselves out on it. And sometimes, you know, it is just as easy as Mel Robbins, five, four, three, two, one, let's go. Get up, get on the bike. Get up, go and do this. Get up, make your lunch. Get up, stick to your plan. Get up, move, stop, go to bed maybe. That's what we need to do. We need to start realizing that everything our bodies do, everything that they do is because of the information that we give it. Food is information, thoughts are information. How we feel are, is based on our thoughts. What we do and what we don't do are based on decisions that we make. And when we don't make a decision, that's still a decision. We've made a choice to not do something. I think we are better than that. I think that we are not looking at our own empowerment that's deep within. I think we're forgetting to look at the purpose that we have in this life, which is, if we're chosen by God, which I believe we all are, 
then we're on a mission. We have a purpose to help others. And how that's going to show up in your life is always going to be based on the way you treat yourself. Because, you know, yeah, you got to put your own oxygen mask on first. So if you want to give more, if you want to be more purposeful in your life, if you want to have a life that's indeed vibrant, you got to start with what's in your head. You got to start. And you got to stop pushing things off. Stop saying just a little bit when you know a little bit's just going to drag you right down into the place you just got out of. A little bit will hurt. But let, guess what? When you see your vibrant goals on the horizon, you have a vision for what you want your life to be like, this stuff starts to diminish. And the day after day, putting one foot in front of the other, just making a little bit of progress, gets us out of process perfection and instead moves the needle. And eventually the needle moves between your toes, you know, or you're taking your measurements. I sure hope you are too, because that's going to be probably more indicative of what's going on than even what's on the scale. But this is how we get to the place of having the lives we want. Vibrant, exciting, the best that it can possibly be. And you get to write the script of what that looks like. You know, you get to write it. So I'm inviting you to get out of the process and get into the progress. Don't let your perfectionism hold you back. Don't let procrastination hold you back. Just start doing the things. Write them down, get an accountability partner, we call them body clutter buddies, and get to work. Your life is dependent on it. Your life depends on what you do, not what you say. Mm. We have work to do, sisters. Peace be with you. I will see you tomorrow. And don't forget, I will not be on on Saturday unless you decide to join us for Full Bloom. All day virtual event. We're going to get that stuff between your ears straightened out. This is a pinnacle foundational workshop for everyone. Join me, will you? Savingdinner.com forward slash bloom. Can't wait. Peace be with you.